Hello fam, it's your boy Gabriel Lee, and today I'm going to talk about Reign of Kings and Incidental Gameplay. Incidental Gameplay, or Emergent Gameplay, I think is the also correct term, is when a player is introduced into the world, the virtual rule system that a game follows, and something not entirely expected happens, and that's the gameplay moment that usually sticks with a lot of people, and especially with me, I feel is probably one of the most potent important uh, experiences that occur through gameplay or through video games. And Reign of Kings fits really well into this because it is almost entirely player driven. The basic system is that you collect resources that allows you to have a bigger sway or bigger say uh, within the rule system. It, it literally just makes you follow the basic process of the game much more efficiently, much quicker, uh, much more dramatically. So <laughs> there's a lot of differencing uh, or different factors in the game, but most of it comes from player personality, player drive, player motivation, things of that nature, because most players could get the same gear fairly easily and be on a fairly level playing field in terms of how well they operate within the system. They are solely making a difference based on their actions, their interpretations of the rules, how they think the game should be, how they think the king should act, and things of that nature. And one incident that stands out particularly in my mind is uh, we were building up a little fort, a little kid came over, and I mean he is actually a little kid. There's VoIP, uh, voice chat built into Reign of Kings so you can talk to people vocally and get a feel for them that way because honestly if we were just typing we could all fucking bullshit each other really well. And that would be, um, I guess, more intriguing, less intriguing, uh, not intriguing. Uh, it, it's hard to say if a system ran just on chat, how it compares to VoIP. I played Face of Mankind, and that just ran on type chat for the most part, and it, it worked pretty well. There, there was a lot of lying, a lot of lying. One time I was shot to death because people thought I had drugs. And the drugs were laid on planet on my character's body. And it sparked a whole war. It sparked a whole entire war. And everyone was like, you're just saying that this happened this way because you are supporting this one person for being the leader of the faction. I was like, I don't even fucking know this person. He was just on the mission with me. And you assigned me to this mission. All of you people that were there saw them point the drive. It was like a, I, I was like a low, low, uh, <laughs> and, uh, player in the system. I was not a, a major mover swayer at all. And so, why? I don't know. Maybe they didn't like me. Maybe they didn't like my, how I chatted. They didn't like that I liked another player from a different faction, and his name was Clean, and he wore all white armor, and he was fucking cool as fuck. Uh, he, he's honestly just a really cool person. He was uh, an informant on a bounty mission we did. It, like, he it was better than NPCs because he was an actual person. <laughs> so shout out to Clean. Um, but... So yeah, I guess I guess the bullshitting factor works a whole lot better if you are able to type. So we so on Reign of Kings, the fact that you're able to vocally interact is pretty cool, and it allows for a lot more, uh, I guess, tone and storytelling aspects of everyone's all bored and they're role playing together. That be that is another incident where there's a completely player created experience within the game system uh, is the role playing aspect of Reign of Kings and a lot of games I guess could have the same uh, role playing experience it just stands out in Reign of Kings because I've played it so recently 
and have really enjoyed it so far. So back to the story about an incident in Raid of Kings. The little kid gets there, he's boyping us, and he's like, Hey, can I have some pickaxes? And this is like fucking ridiculous. But we're not anywhere near as young as this kid anymore. And we know that the little kids are bastards. They're fuck ups. They will take your shit. They MLG that shit. They make 420 montages of gameplay. They listen to dubstep every single day of their life. Or I guess since dubstep's like going away, they listen to things like Up, Down, Funky Up. Up, down, fuck you. No, that's not it. That's not. Wait, it's something way, way worse. <laughs> uh, Eleven-year-olds have to listen to. It's probably like some Ariana Grande music or something. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I shouldn't be criticizing any of these people actually, because there's nothing wrong with it. It's it. It's just little kids in games like to play their music over their microphone and they like to be little dicks because they're on an equal playing field and I don't blame them. Uh, they're, they're put down pretty much anywhere else in life compared to an adult or to even an older child and so when you get into a game and you have that level playing field you are, are going to take advantage of it. You, you are in a place of power and you are going to exert that power to the people around you, then that's fine. I mean, I would way rather them do that in a game than in real life. Uh, because in a game, it's just, it's just for fun. It's all, everyone's going to have fun. Even if you're losing, if a game's good, you're going to have fun. And so, yeah, let the kids express themselves in video games. I think that's important. I think that's why video games are important. And so, I don't really trust them, but I kind of trust them. I, I want to help them out. I want to build a bigger guild. My friend really doesn't trust them. He's like, he's going to steal all our shit. So we try and work out a deal. I give him a stone pickaxe. And I'm like, go collect 250 stone. And you can join the guild, or you get an iron pickaxe. One of those two things was going to occur when he got back. If I had been there. But my friend was there. And I was doing something. I have no idea. And so, make that part of the story short, the kid gets chased off, maybe attacked sometimes, definitely not killed, he runs away, and we forget about it, we're like, whatever, it's not a big deal. Uh, he says that he's going to come back with some friends of his, and like, take over, that's, that's fine, whatever. I don't believe it. Um, but so he runs off into the wilderness. We decide that I'm going to be king. Or I'm going to try and go be king. I have uh, Iron Halberd and I'm going to take over Shite, break in through the walls and get into the ancient throne room. And so I go up there. And there's two people up there. And one of the people says, the kid. And I'm like, hey, kid, where's my 250 stone? And he goes on to a big spiel about how he was attacked or killed by my friend. And he's pissed. And he's like, you said I could join your guild. And I was like, you can still join my guild. And he's like, your friend attacked me. Your friend attacked me. Your friend attacked me. And then I noticed I'm on the ground because the other person ran out behind my back, put a rope around my leg. And then the little kid slits my throat and kills me. And it was bizarre. It was surreal. It did it. It was so like unnecessary. I could have killed them in two hits if it, there was like a reason to be aggressive. But so at the end of the day, the little kid becomes the king. Everyone loves him except for us. And that's that's kind of the end of the story. But it would like it just sticks with me. It's so like real of a power struggle. It's so an example of how someone who really intends to like 
be in that position of power will will do go to great extents to be in that position of power or if they feel offended they will go to great extents to express that they've been offended I don't even know where I'm going after that but <laughs> I think those two statements uh, were not statements I had originally conceived about that uh, event in the game, but thinking about it now, those are so like on point in my mind, which I mean, it isn't saying a oh, lot, I'm the one that just said them, uh, but I, I think that that in itself is another example of why I think uh, immersion gameplay or incidental gameplay is so important is because it does create parallels like this because it is based on a reaction between individual players or how players interact in the system. So I want to know what you feel about incidental gameplay, games that really uh, mold themselves to how the players are playing and things of that nature. Uh, how prominent and potent those sort of experiences in gameplay are to you, whether you like go out and seek games that really deliver on that aspect, or if you don't, uh, just any thoughts really on what is important to ga in gaming to you or not important to gaming to you. Thank you all for watching, fam. I love you all, and I'll see you tomorrow.